active inspiration comes from a source or method that is more or less available as you need it. If you already have inspirational sources to share with the group, good news. If you don't, maybe my talk will help you to free associate and bring to mind actual or potential sources of inspiration to share. So I'm gonna start with a little levity, a couple of jokes. Um, my uncle died recently. He was in an accident and lost a lot of blood, but nobody knew his blood type. I'll never forget his inspirational last words. Be positive. And then there's the joke about three elderly men who would like their life to be an inspiration. The three men are sitting together and discussing what they want their family and friends to say when they are lying in their casket at their funeral. The first man says, I want them to say I was a great father and a great friend. I want them to say I could always be counted on. The second guy says, I just want them to talk about how much I changed the world and how I left it a better place. The third man says, I want them to look right at me and say, look, he's moving. We sometimes think of inspiration as something that happens to creative people, inspired by the muse. And being creative in arts and science is life affirming, especially in times of plague. For example, Newton invented calculus during the plague and Shakespeare wrote King Lear and Macbeth while escaping the bubonic plague. But certainly inspiration isn't something reserved for the few. It can be a daily source of motivation, for, motivation and strength for all but the most mind shackled individuals. Wall quotes, quotes that you put in your wall are relatively common. It's worthwhile to make an effort to keep our sources of inspiration genuine so that they continue to be sources of meaning and renewal. Consider the prayer I spoke before meals as a child. Bless this food to the good of our bodies, amen. The prayer became repetitive and meaningless, although I will say that even a mechanical prayer can at least give one pause. So I've organized four types of inspiration in the hopes of inspiring you to either become more aware of your own sources of inspiration or to remind you to bring inspiration alive, especially during our current circumstances. My first type of inspiration is poetic, a poetic or prose sentence or phrase. Here's one I found. If nothing goes right, go left. I believe the quote is intended to encourage creative flexibility and is useful if it actually cues us to be more flexible. It does little good to just mouth the words. There's a quote about that as well. Don't just talk about it, be about it. Apparently Gandhi did not actually say be the change you want to see in the world. What he said was, we but mirror the world. All the tendencies present in the outer world are to be found in the world of our body. If we could change ourselves, the tendencies in the world would also change. So I feel be the change you want to see in the world is more elegant and easier to remember. A second type of inspiration is what I'm calling seeking solace, becoming immersed in a creative activity that becomes a sanctuary. Examples include finding comfort in, the, in music, the arts, nature, a hobby or a craft. We can be either receptive or active. The important thing is to allow the activity to nurture or to come into a flow state. There's no room for judgment and self-criticism when seeking solace. Our church. 
Pardon? Generic. <laughs> but that I get. So anyway, um, it, a third type of inspiration is uh, to seek to seek renewal through an established practice that is designed to slow down a cluttered mind. Examples include mindfulness, meditation, yoga, a living religious practice or ritual, interbeing with nature, or interbeing with anything, such as your favorite key, teacup. You could make a ritual out of preparing and sipping tea. You could hug a tree or watch birds with a sense of interconnection. When we participate more fully with the world, we can experience intimacy. We can invoke a sense of mutual belonging and nurturing. You can also do that with pets. Can you connect eye to eye, heart to heart with your dog or cat? A fourth type of inspiration is through role models, heroes, historical or religious luminaries, people and mythic figures who inspire. When I was 18 years old, my mythic hero was the character Kwai Chain Kane from the television series Kung Fu in the early 1970s. I would often ask myself, what would Kwai Chain do? Imagine that frame of mind or access Taoist wisdom from the television show. I suppose I did this for about a year until I could access my own connection to Taoist and Zen mind. Then these spiritual sources became inspirational. They still are. There's a caveat with heroes. If the hero was an actual person, it's possible we may be disappointed when they turn out to be human. They can let us down by not being perfect. There's a saying in Tibetan Buddhism, find your teacher at least two valleys away. That's so you can see them at their best and not when they're having a vulnerable moment or imperfection that fails to inspire. However, I feel that when our human heroes are allowed to be imperfect, that can make their accomplishments even more remarkable. They are inspiration despite or because of the human condition. The other caveat with heroes is that they may be inspirational for about a day before they are typecast into a role with automatic expectations. According to NPR, that has happened with frontline COVID workers. Nurses have complained that people just expect them to perform heroically without realizing the personal cost, the higher risk of infection and the burnout that goes with such hard jobs. These nurses stated they do not want to be seen as heroes. The same could be true of firefighters. So in closing, it is useful to understand our personal pathways to refuge, the pathways we can access to keep ourselves safe and free from inner and outer harm. Said another way, our inspirational sources can be used religiously to support and nurture us in times of stress and strain. So thank you for your kind attention. Um, I can open this up to a share, to a process of sharing inspiration. If you'd like, I can repeat the four types of inspiration again, just quickly, if that would be helpful. Would that be helpful to do that? Yes. Yes. First type of inspiration is poetic or prose sentence or phrase. Um, and that's something that you can, you know, I have a book, you know, I have Rumi, I have Mary Oliver. Um, you, you can have your own. I, I still look at the Dada Jing. You, you might find uh, looking at the seven, um, you know, the um, 
the UU principles is renewing for you. A second type of inspiration is what I'm calling seeking solace. That's becoming immersed in a creative process that becomes a sanctuary. The third type is to seek renewal through an established practice that is designed to slow down a cluttered mind. And that's really can be useful, but it takes a little bit of daily cultivation. You know, when you're finding yourself gripped by fear, for example, that might be a time to decide you know, do I want to live in fear now? I understand what the problems are. Is there a way to feel the spirit of true love? Do I have a way to do that? Or whatever that is, that, that helps you to feel better. Gratitude, whatever. And a fourth type of inspiration is through role models, heroes, religious or relig historical or religious luminaries. <laughs> Um, Abe Lincoln, maybe, you know, and look what he went through. People and mythic figures who inspire. 